So good evening once again. Brother Johnson, you're there? Yes, I'm always there, brother. Yeah, thank you. So we will start, uh, we'll get into the Bible study straight. So let us pray. Yes. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the world. Amen. Father, in your hands we place this evening as we hear your word, as we understand your word. Give us the grace to practice your word in our lives and to have that single focus on you. As your word says, uh, Lord Jesus, seek ye first the kingdom. Let that get deeper into our hearts not for the things of the world, but Lord, to completely give ourselves into your hands through your word, which you have spoken, which is spoken by your Holy Spirit. Let that be a single focus for us in our as we go through this Bible study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Over to you. Praise God. Praise God. So we'll go back to our foundation scripture, brother. Yeah. A foundation scripture is Proverbs 18 14. The strong spirit of a man sustain him in bo bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and a broken spirit who can raise up or bear. So our spirit got to be strong, and when our spirit is strong, we will be able to sustain body pain, sickness, disease, you name it, everything. Yeah. Trials, tribulations. Uh, storms but when our spirit is weak yeah. we'll be broken yeah. we finish this so let's go to Ephesians 6 verse 10 yeah read be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might be strong in the Lord or be strong in your spouse <laughs> strong in the Lord most of the time we are strong way in our spouse, in our worldly things. In the, in, in our job, in our position, yeah. in our money. Yeah. So what is giving you the foundation to become strong? There can be many things. Yeah. But the Lord says, no, no, no. Be strong in the Lord. It means strong in, be strong in his word. Because the Lord and his word are one and the same. Yeah. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yeah. So read that please. 610. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength for him. That strength which his boundless might provides. So, we are strong not on our own strength or our own effort. Mm. But we are strong because of our union with the Lord. Our union with the Lord is our union with his word. Mm. And when his word begins to dominate our mind. Mm. So let's take, for example, Joel. Now, have you ever heard people say to you, brother, I need you to pray for me because I'm feeling very weak? Yeah. Has anybody ever told you? Yes. Okay. Now, what happens when a person is saying those words? Let's go to Joel 3. Please read that. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Now, Whenever the enemy would come, the Israelites were so scared that they would run up the hill and hide. And they would come and take the harvest. But this time, the Lord spoke to the prophet Joel and said, take your equipment of farming and beat it and turn it into sword and turn it into spear. Mm. Then, don't open your mouth and pray, but believe my word that I'm with you. And believing in that word, start saying, 
that I am strong. Amen. Why are you strong now? Because that Lord is with them. Because the Lord is with me. Praise God. Now tell me honestly, how many people when they are weak, they say I'm strong? Not many. And how many people when they are weak, they keep telling one another, I'm feeling so weak. So many people. So when a person is weak and he says, I am strong, is he telling a lie? He's not telling a lie. Then, then what is he saying? He's saying he's uh, saying that because of the power of God whom he believes in. If he's so, it is, it's, so, it is, it, so it is it is a matter of faith. Yeah, it's a strong in spirit. So when he's saying I'm strong, what is the physical evidence? Physical, there is no evidence. There may not be evidence. So so how can he say he's strong? He's strong in his spirit. Only a strong man with I, I, I'll give you a secret today, okay? <coughs> Jos, listen very carefully. Okay. Supposing you are 75 and Sharu is 65. Mm. And you never had children. Never had children. Mm. At that age, can you even think of having a child? No. no. So there is no desire. Because, because, because it has already crossed the age, the hope is gone. It has become hopeless. There's no question of desire. But if you see, God is a God who first plants a seed called desire. Mm. Now, I want you to think about these people here. They have got so much of fear that even when they see the enemy, they only hear the voice that the enemy is coming, mm. they would leave everything and run away. Mm. And that's why there was no desire to fight back. There was no desire of victory. They were, their mindset was that they were victim. Uh, brother, so the, can, you, can you say that again? So the first thing that the Lord puts in our heart is the desire, right? Yes. And that desire or from that desire is the next step. Yes, yes, wow. yes. Praise God. See, see uh, when there is no desire, there is no hope. Yeah, correct. Hmm. Now, when there is a desire, now, now for Abraham, at that age, there is no desire. Mm. So God tells him, I'm going to make you great. I'm going to make you a blessing. And I'm going to make you a blessing to the nations and your descendants. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't talk to me about descendants. I don't have a son. And I'm 75. And God says, listen, you did not have one. But now I want to tell you, I will give you. Mm. So God started putting in Abraham's life a desire. How do you think God put a desire in Joseph's life? A dream. Mm. Beautiful. How do you think God put a, a desire in Moses' life? Mm. The burning bush. Mm. How do you think God put a desire in David? Mm. When Samuel came and poured oil on his head and said, you're going to be the king. Mm. So when you are reading the Bible, mm. the Bible should first create a desire. Yeah. In fact, it, this is the same question which Jesus asked the man who was uh, lying on the pool of Ah, what, what is your desire? Ah, do you want to be healed? Yeah, that is a desire very crucial. There are so many people, sorry to say, brother. Mm. There are so many people who don't desire to get healed. You know why? Mm. Because as long as they are lying down on the bed, they get everything. Yeah. So I do not, didn't need to go to work. I don't need anything. I yeah. can be lying down there. So yeah. some of them desire to be sick only. Mm. So here he gives them a desire. And when he gives them a desire, he says, now... Based on that desire that I've given you, now you make it your plowing equipment into a tools of warfare, weapons of warfare. Mm -hmm. Now, when they have made their weapons into warfare, the stronghold of being a victim has died. Mm -hmm. You know what's a stronghold? A stronghold is something that you have nourished for years and it has become like a fortress. Mm -hmm. And you are a prisoner in that stronghold. Mm. 
so you are not letting anybody come in neither you are going out but you are a slave or a prisoner in a stronghold now stronghold can be of two kinds it can be a stronghold of being a victim because of your past bad experience or you can take the word of god and make a new stronghold on the word of god amen so when you make a stronghold now now, now what happened with joseph he made a new stronghold of what about that dream mm. moses made a stronghold of what he experienced at the burning bush so everyone if you look at paul a stronghold on his way to damascus mm. so the question is when i'm reading the bible am i reading a book or am i reading that god the living god is right here in front of me and is talking those words and those words that i'm reading are not just words they are god's word coming out of god's mouth now now can you see between the words there is a gap space between the between the two words there is a space right mm -hmm. between the alphabet there is little space right yeah that's where is the hidden secrets and revelation mm -hmm. what are those what are those no, no, that's where the hidden things are yeah. and when you sit with the lord mm -hmm. he gives you the hidden things from those words mm. So how many people do you think who have physical evidence that they are weak would open their mouth and say I'm strong We will sing that song you know and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us give thanks when the song is over somebody says how are you oh my god i do we really mean what we sing yeah most of the times we don't <laughs> so most of the time do we speak the physical evidence or the spiritual evidence physical evidence and the word of god says be strong in the lord means you are united with the lord not in physical evidence oh. but in spiritual evidence through his word and through that spiritual evidence you have the power of god the anointing of god amen amen so how, so how many people get stuck over here and they actually prophesy their own downfall their own destruction because remember everything in the spiritual world operates based on words mm. there is always a battle for words and you are the person who is going to speak the words and when you speak the words those words activate the spiritual world that's why jesus said if you have faith then you can say in other words faith gets activated when you open your mouth and say and faith is talking about things not seen faith is never about things seen so why why, why then why do we uh, use uh, why do we pray in the sense like uh, jesus said pray or many times it says bible says pray what is the difference uh, what is no no what no 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 for example let the weak say i'm strong now you are saying lord i thank you for joel 3:10 that you taught me mm. to speak my faith and therefore i declare in the name of jesus i'm strong now did i make a prayer oh yeah yes but did i make a prayer in agreement to the word of god yes yes now will my faith 
make that prayer work. Yes. Definitely. So faith is always, see, faith is two kinds. One is the Bible faith and one is the contaminated faith. Mm. The contaminated faith is the person who is speaking opposite to what God is saying. Mm. Like, example? Example, please pray, keep me in prayer, Brother Joseph. I'm weak, yeah. Mm. I'm very weak. Okay. It's just against to, against the word of God. And, and I think so. Somebody has done a call, brother. And I went to one group, one prayer, and the the person who was there, the leader, he said that you know, uh, somebody has done something on me. That's why all these things are happening. Now, what happens when a person hears that? You become uh, devastated if he's not. But but when a person says that, he will start laughing. Let me show you. If you understand it right, please read. Now the Lord has had said unto Abra Abra Abraham. Hey, one minute, I'll change the yeah. translation. Hmm. Yeah. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make you make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So, now, Jos, now, Jos, you want to curse me? No. Do you dare to curse me? No. If I know the scriptures right, mm. then the devil can't tell me a lie and deceive me. Mm. So do you read the Bible or do you study the Bible or do you study, meditate and apply the Bible? Mm. What happens is a person says, read the Bible every day. Okay, I read it. And then you ask him, what did you read? I don't remember. Okay. Did you read your doctor's report? Yes. Do you remember what was there? Yes, I remember everything. So now one is saying, I, I can remember the doctor's report, but I can't remember what's written in the Bible. So whose seed have you got in your heart? So if you got the corrupted seed in your heart, then the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm. So when you are speaking something, I know what is overflowing in your heart. Because when it overflows, it comes out of your mouth. Mm. So if problems are coming, oh, coming out of your mouth, it is a clear sign that you got too much of negative things in your heart, which is not at all the incorruptible seed, but the corruptible seed. Mm. So will it bring any harvest? No, it will not. It will surely bring self-destruction. Yes. So can the devil put pressure on you and cause you to destroy your own life, your own loved ones and everyone? Now the mother, now, now, now somebody said, how is your son? And the mother starts speaking all the negative things that the son is actually doing. Mm. Now, has she cursed her son? Yes. I want to tell all the parents right now. I'll tell you, when I chased my wife with a knife to kill her, my children were seven and eight years old. They have seen it. They have seen their dad turn into a monster. They were very scared. And when I got touched and I would go close to them, they would start screaming and yelling and crying. So I told father, father, now I've changed, but my children... They are scared of me. He said, don't go, 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 don't go close to them. But do one thing. When your children are fast asleep, you and your wife, one can take a thousand, two can take ten thousand. Where two of three, you, two or three agree anything on earth, it shall be done by my father in heaven. So you and your wife, in agreement, lay your hand on your children when they are fast asleep. 
not when they are awake, when they are fast asleep. And talk to God to deliver them from all that is not of the kingdom of God, the bad experience that they had gone through. And once you have made that prayer, believe that God has answered that prayer and you have received the answer to that prayer. And now every night begin to thank God that the anointing of the Holy Spirit has released them from all captivity, rejection, hurt feelings, whatever it is, it's all gone. And then keep praying in tongues. Now, in Bombay, uh, there is these people come to take money. You know, they beg on the street and they've got a big rope and it's a bare body. With the rope, he'll hit his own body yeah. and a sound will come. Fatak, fatak. Yeah. Big sound will come. I don't know whether it's there in your South India, but in, in Bombay it is. And he'll come like this. Boogoo, 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 boogoo. So when he comes from a distance, my younger daughter would go under the table yeah. and actually shivering. Yeah. But 15 days later on, she was standing on the window grill and she said, Dad, look at this man, how mad he is. He's hitting his own body with the rope. And I was standing there and the Lord reminded me and said, the same baby of yours would be shivering with fear. And the same baby is now standing at the window and looking at that person and he's totally delivered. Amen. What do you say about that? Amazing, you know. I think this is a big, uh, you know, lesson for all the parents, and it's an important. Oh yeah, that's why I'm saying, you know, the uh, the children with autism are getting healed. This is how they get healed. Yeah. Now, I was staying in a place in Bombay where there's a very sharp slope. Yeah. So many a times there are accidents, and you know, in Bombay, if even if it is not touching and it comes very close, they start giving bad words and fight and all. So now it became like this. We could be standing at the window and we can stop the fight without going down. Mm. And the children would say, Dad, come on, let's stop the fight. Mm. <laughs> and what were we doing? We would take the authority in the name of Jesus, call the angels and say, disperse from here. All you evil spirits that are causing quarrel over here in Jesus' name. And the children would, would watch that. And then the next time there was a fight, they would say, Dad, this is my turn now. Let me let me get this let me get this fight over now in Jesus' name. So they began to learn to use the authority. Yeah. How, when you speak the words, you can command angels to go and bring forth your inheritance. Yeah. You see, yeah. praise, God. praise God. So, so when you use faith, everything in your life begins to change. Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead. Read, read that every believer. Every believer has the potential to walk in a greater place of supernatural strength. The stronger our spirit. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The potential. The potential. I had potential the day I was baptized as a baby, but I never tapped into that potential. Because all my life, I had nothing to do with God yeah. and nothing to do with his work. Yeah. But when I got touched by the Lord and his word, I began to realize that God doesn't want me to seek money or my basic necessities like food, water, clothing and all those things which the world teaches us and it has also become uh, the most important factor for Christians. Yeah. which according to Jesus, he has stripped it, absolutely stripped it and said, it is not at all important. Yeah. Do you know that? Yeah, you don't need what to eat, what to wear is not important, but... Yes, but he said, the pagans do that. Yeah. So how many times we come for pagan worship? <laughs> Most of the times. So, so you can be in a prayer meeting and you end up becoming a pagan worship. Mm. Amen. Actually speaking, what Jesus was saying is you seek mm. the kingdom mm. and his righteousness. Mm. So the currency that God has given is called as time 
and we use this currency to seek the kingdom and his righteousness. And all that food, clothing, and all those basic necessities that we put importance to is supposed to be added unto us. So in other words, you are not pursuing these things, but you are pursuing the kingdom. And these things are pursuing you. Mm. So, how do you I, how do you make that shift, uh, brother? See, today I was uh, just thinking about this particular thing. When you fix when you fix the eyes on the Lord, it is very easy to say that. But when you even when you are praying to God, for example, to uh, you know, Lord, I I I am with you. My eyes are on, on you. Heal me. When I say that, my eyes actually is on the sickness. It's not on the Lord. If you really look at it, or my debt has to be cleared. My eyes are on the debt, but uh, you know I'm you know so that how do you make that shift in your mind in your heart? To okay, my brother Jos. Your eyes. Do you drive a car? Yes. I'm not talking a toy car, a real car. Real car, yeah. <laughs> okay. Have you ever driven a car in a rainy on a rainy day? Yes. Did you use a wiper? Yes. Why did you use a wiper? To see, to clean the water. To clear the water, but it was still raining. Then why did you use the the, the glass became wet again? Yeah, it keeps uh, clearing. It gives it more clarity. Correct. Okay. In the same way, when your eyes are fixed on the Lord, mm. and you got those negative things, mm. did you open your mouth and keep saying, "No"? You no. kept your mouth shut. Mm. Remember, you can never win a battle with your mouth shut. Mm. Never fight negative thoughts in your mind mm. never fight thoughts with thoughts mm. jesus used his words by saying to the devil it is written the scripture says mm. if jesus had to open his mouth and speak to the devil and fix him up mm. and every time the devil spoke something jesus opened his mouth and spoke the relevant scripture Mm. out of his mouth and that word went and filled up the devil's mouth so much that he began to he began to run for away from jesus mm. so jesus has already given us the example how to fight him mm. but if you don't stick to what jesus has thought and you begin to try to do something other than what jesus did the result is failure mm. so remember don't fight thoughts with thoughts mm. fight thoughts with words can we have a demonstration? Yeah. How to fight? Yeah. Will you be honest with me? Yeah. Okay. Let's have an exercise. Uh, Jesse and uh, Jesse and Jose, can we have an exercise? Yes, yes, brother. Because you you learn how to fight temptations. Okay. Now, when I ask you, look at the game. When I ask you to think in your mind and count words one to hundred, you can close your eyes, you can do whatever you want, but you have to count it in your mind and therefore you can't open your mouth. Hold on, Josh, don't count here. I will tell you when to count. Yeah, I'm not count. Already started here. First, wait. <laughs> okay, I, I, my, my, my conditions are not finished. So you're counting in your mind with your mouth closed. And whatever I say, you have to repeat it and continue to count in your mind. Yeah. Now you are you are counting those uh, those numbers deliberately yeah. in your mind, but you are not opening your mouth. But what I am saying, you have to open your mouth and speak the words. And now we'll see what happens to the counting. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Start counting. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said say hallelujah. I did not say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be Jesus. Hallelujah. I am the body of Christ. Satan has no power over me. No power over me. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. The counting stopped. You know why? Because God has designed man. Yes. God has designed man in such a way he thinks and when he speaks 
the thinking stops. So now when you have an issue and you open your mouth and you keep on saying it over and over and over again, with might be just a whisper, but the words coming out. Now what happens is words are spiritual things. And when it is mixed with faith and you are speaking those words, they are called like spiritual net that goes and traps those thoughts that are trying to captivate your mind. Have you ever committed a sin without first thinking? No. First will come a thought and the thought is the root which will produce the fruit by action. So also words produce thoughts. Now what am I doing now? Speaking words. What are these words doing? Changing your thinking. Right. And if you can maintain that thoughts mm. continuously, then your godly thoughts will produce godly actions. And godly actions will produce godly harvest. Mm. Ungodly thoughts will produce ungodly actions which will produce ungodly harvest. So my question is, in a day, where do you spend your time with? Who are you spending your time with? Who is talking to you? Who is teaching you? Yeah. Is it a news channel? Is it a talk show? Is it a serial? Yeah. Is it a movie? Who is talking to you and who is teaching you? Because whoever you are giving your time and it causes you to keep your attention on, mm. that where your attention is fixed in becomes your master. Amen. So if you are attracted to some serials, after some days you find that serial has become your master. Mm. So if you are spending time in the Bible, and, you are at, and it catches your attention on the word of God, in no time you find the word has become your master. Brother, when you quote, uh, one question which has come from a participant, is when you quote uh, the scripture, uh, do we need to quote uh, the book and the verses or only the scripture? You know, like for example... The, 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 the verse and the number hmm. is written for us to find it and make it easy. Mm. Now let's say you forgot the number, but you know the scripture. Yeah. It will still work. But let's say you forgot the word and you know the scripture number, it will not work. Oh, okay. If you if if you are facing the devil and you say Luke 4 18, he'll start laughing. But let's say you don't know the Luke 4 18 and you're saying the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The job is done. Amen. So Annie got the clarity on that thing. Thank, thanks, uh, brother. In fact, there is uh, also one uh, clarification which I'm supposed to ask in the beginning, but I forgot. Mm. Brother. This has happened. Uh, this actually was uh, based on a session which uh, you did two days back. Okay, no problem. Shall I give that opportunity for, uh, the, uh, for a person? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, uh, uh, return to you there. Uh, can I just, uh, can you unmute the mic? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jos. Yeah, sorry, I was supposed to put you in uh, on, at the beginning. I just forgot. It's okay, Jos. It's okay. Yeah. So I, she, I can't uh, see her. No, no. Brother, I can't see you. Oh, you want to see me? <laughs> then I will get inspired. No. <laughs> <laughs> I am your student. The, um, I am on video now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Tell me. Brother, the yeah, other day you were talking. Your eyes, not your face. Let me brother, see how you look after a, after more than a year. I'm looking at you. <laughs> yes, brother. <laughs> Come on, show me your face. Brother, I have unmuted the video. I'm you not are, able to. No, no, no. Your screen. Your screen. You have to just adjust your screen. What do I do? I okay, 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 do okay. Forget, forget it. Forget it. Okay. okay. Brother, hmm. The other day you were talking about this verse uh, from Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. You mm -hmm. said bring the full tithe into the storehouse. Mm. 
and uh, you were saying uh, that was in the Old Testament that ten percent. Hmm. Remember, Abraham gave ten percent of what yes, he. Yes, 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 yes. And then you said uh, in the New Testament it is different. And then in between, uh, one uh, another question interrupted this: what you wanted to say. Hmm. So I just want to know what is it that you wanted to say in the New Testament. Ah, uh, yes. See, in the in the Old Testament, it's all about the law. Okay. I can give my ten percent, but my heart is not there. But I did it. Okay. It's all about obeying the law. Okay. There, there is no question of your heart condition. Okay. But in the New Testament, it's not your heart condition. It's it's not your it's not your action. It is your heart condition. Okay. Now, for example, you were so bright. Suddenly, it became dark. <laughs> you know, right. what? no right. electricity. <laughs> yeah, electricity is gone. Now, now, do you understand? So, electric is a power yeah. by which the light is okay. making the room bright. Yeah. The moment that electric power is gone, now yes. you are on computer, laptop power, or some uh, uh, what do you call? It? No, now, now the power. Is... Now the power has come back, brother. Correct, correct. In the same way, in the same way, yeah. your action is right. Mm -hmm. But the heart condition is wrong. Okay. In the new covenant, it is still disconnected. Oh. Because in the new covenant, I'll show you. Okay. Thanks for asking that question. Please read. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So, faith works by? Love. So, if you did anything, Okay. And there it was not because of love, but some other motive, okay. it won't work. Mm. So love is like, you know, the current, uh, the fuse box. Okay. And if the fuse box is gone, okay. uh, the electric power doesn't flow into your house. Yes. None, none of your gadgets work. Yes. Okay. You, do you have a cupboard? Cupboard. Yes, brother. Where you keep your dresses? Yes, brother. Do you wear a sari? Yes, brother. So on one, in one hanger, how many saris do you put? One or two, three, four? In one hanger, one sari, brother. Hey, no, no, not possible. Woman, they put one hanger, one sari. Oh my God, there are so many saris. How will they put, put all of them? One on top of the other and the other and the other and the other. Okay. No, 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 no brother. No, no, no. It's only one to one. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Might be. Okay, now, when the clothes become heavy, does the load come on the main row, main rod? Yes, it does. It does. And the rod falls down. Yes. Now, when the rod has fallen down, what happened to all the hangers? Everything has fallen and okay. it isn't. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, can you put the hanger back without first fixing the rod? No, I first have to fix the rod. And what if the rod is unstable? Then I can't fix it, brother. Because by the time you finish putting it, again it falls. Again it will fall, yes. So you need to give some more support so yes. that it is very, very strong, firm and stable and it yes. doesn't bend. Yes. Now, can you put all the hangers? Yes, I can. That's exactly what the Lord wants to tell you is okay. that rod is love. And okay. on that, you can put your faith, you can put joy, you can put healing, you can put deliverance, you can put protection, you can put prosperity, you can put eternal life, you can put the godly marriage, you can put everything on that and each anger is the different blessings of God. But the, the root is the Lord of love. The Lord of love, okay. So, so in a day, how much does the devil put pressure on the Lord of love? Oh, plenty of pressure. So, so when you understand the system, you are mm -hmm. saying, mm -hmm. I am not going to allow the Lord of love to bend or to fall but I'm going to keep that rod strong. Any person who walks in agape love or yes. one-sided love, 
or selfless love or mm -hmm. is a giver not a taker okay 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 he is only thinking about how can I be a solution to somebody's problem. Hmm. If that becomes your attitude every day and you go around solving people's problem, you will never have lack in your life. Okay. Okay. Because the whole system hmm. in the kingdom of God in the new covenant operates through love. And the Bible says that this love has already been poured into a heart. Yes. Now, now let me show you that. Yeah, read it. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed. I just changed the, changed the translation. Oh. Oh. And, hope does not disappoint. and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So is the love already in your heart? Yes, it is already poured out. But can you feel that love? I mean... Not all the time. Not all the time, brother. Let's be honest. Not all the time, brother. Because please understand, yeah. everything in your spirit yeah. can never be sensed by your senses. Okay. Your five senses are in your soul. They are not in your yes. in the spirit. Yes. yes. So you can't sense that love. Yes. But, but, but you can use that love. How? Now, when you go, if I talk something, uh, Jos, you won't get angry with me? No. I know this. I know this, auntie. So no problem. But, but <laughs> when I'm asking her some question, I don't want you to uh, say, oh, oh, ruled, please. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, brother. Okay, okay, okay. Now you went to the washroom to have bath. Okay. And there's a tap over there. Yes. But can you see the pipe or the pipe is concealed? Pipe is concealed. Okay. Now when you open the tap, yes. the water comes. Yes, brother. What if you turn the, pipe, uh, the tap on the opposite side? Will the water come? No, it will not. It will get tightened. Yes. But the water comes from the tap. So I came to your house for the first time. And while going, you said, brother, you're so good. I, I want to give you some gift. Okay. So I tell you, can you give me two of these taps? Okay. And you are so happy. You go to the market and you buy those taps. You okay. don't know why I'm asking you the tap. So I go to my village and I tell my wife, mm. hey, we don't have to go to the river anymore. Mm. I saw in Bangalore, in one auntie's house, auntie Rita's house, there was, she fixed two taps. She had one and I brought two, raised <laughs> one, and I made a hole and I fixed it in the wall and I opened the tap. Will the water come? It will not because How there is no connection. Or How come the house it is coming? Because there is a connection. There is a concealed pipe which we cannot see. And it is connected to the water tank, which is above on the terrace. Yes, yes it is connected. And how, many, how many buckets are there in the in the upper tank? How many buckets of water? Oh my God, I don't know how many. Oh my God. And how many buckets you want to have bath? Two buckets. Might be two buckets. Might be yeah. two buckets. Yeah. But how much is there in the tank? Plenty. Plenty of water. Plenty of water. So that tank is what God has filled us with love okay and the tap that you open to bless others okay. is when you renew your mind okay. and you do what the scripture says mm -hmm. now the potential of that power called love begins to flow through you bringing blessings to others to others oh, okay so unless you renew your mind you cannot operate in agape love Okay. So you need not you need not feel the love all the time. Ah no 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 no. People who live, people who live by feelings will go for a toss. Okay. So if I can just one second, let me just, uh, let me just uh, unmute. Okay. So in that case, brother. So now, when you help somebody, for example, mm -hmm. you wanted to give uh, you know uh, arms uh, to somebody. Hmm. Uh, what uh, 
So you don't have a feeling to the person whom you are giving. You're giving it out of, uh, you know, maybe a practice that you okay, have. Okay, okay, okay. Let me ask you one thing. Hmm. Is God's love feeling or is it a decision or is it an action? It's a decision. It's a decision. It's a decision and an action. Correct. So is God's love going up and down based on my action? No. Is it is it all the time same? The God's love is the same. Yeah. So is it one sided or two sided? It is one sided because and I... this love is inside of you. Yes. So do you need to feel for that love to go or it is supposed to go anyway? Supposed to go. Now when Mother Teresa saw a poor man mm. on the street, mm. was she moved with compassion because she saw Jesus in that man? Yes. So was it a action that she felt or she did it anyway? It was an action she felt. It's an action that she did, she did yeah. and then when she did, she felt. Yeah. I'm not doing the word of God because I feel. I'm doing the word because he's told me to do. Mm. But when I'm doing, then I'm feeling. Oh. I'm not feeling first and then doing. I'm doing first and then feeling. Mm. Okay. Okay, let, let me put it this way. That day the lady said, I got problem of 21 years. Mm. Okay. Now, did I feel the power or did I do what the word said? You did what the word said. Now, why did she feel after that something happening on her face? Mm. Did she feel first to get healed or she got healed first and then she fell? She got healed first and then she fell. So her decision was that when she was giving me oral exams i said don't tell lies and she was I, I i really appreciate that sister that she said yes i'm wrong she did the correction yeah so the moment she did the correction now what was wrong did she set it right yes yes so when she was turning the the tap she was turning the wrong side now she turned the right side now did the power come yes and did was the power above no nope, the power is always inside our own own spirit but she did not know how to open the tap. So what's my job? My job is to teach you how to open the tap. So what's my Christian life? My Christian life is not to look towards heaven because heaven is inside my heart. Amen. Yeah. So now my job is look into the Bible and renew my mind and the tap is open. So more, more you follow the, uh, follow the word of God and practice it. You experience that love which God has put in your heart. In yes, okay. yes, and that's what I want to tell you. Read the third verse. Now, by this, we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. Mm. Then, whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments, is a liar. And in such a person, the truth does not exist. So, you, if you are a leader, okay, let's say, Joseph, you are the leader, and all the time you get annoyed with everybody. Mm. Do you really know Jesus? No, I do not. So you might be you might be a leader, but that, that doesn't mean you're qualified that you know Jesus. Mm. My action is wrong. So when a person knows Jesus, how do I know he knows Jesus? Right. When his vertical relationship becomes very strong, the proof is his horizontal relationship also is very strong. So how does he get more and more encounter with Jesus? He gets more and more encounter with Jesus when he practices horizontal mm. relationship. Amen. So horizontal relationship is where you get opportunity to practice agape love. And the more you practice agape love, you get more revelation vertical. Amen. Amen. So it is a, it is a, a complete knitting, vertical and horizontal, that when when to make my horizontal strong, I have to be strong in the vertical. Mm. But to experience more vertical, I have to be strong in horizontal. So every time people come and put pressure, now if I'm going with my feeling, yeah. I will get angry with you. Correct. But if I'm going with the word, I'm saying, yes, I'm angry, but I will not get angry. I will still love it. Amen.
Praise God. So, so, so it's uh, so you are not moved by your emotions. You are moved by the spirit of God, the truth. Yeah. And look, read that fifth verse. But whoever obeys His word, truly in this person the love of God has reached perfection. Ah, so if I if I am surrounded with people in my office mm. who are irritating me, wow! I have every day good practice to practice love. So when I'm practicing agape love, I'm get I'm the one who is building up my spiritual muscles. So somebody will be calling you and saying, hey, "Brother, I'm going through trouble. Please pray that God gets me out of this trouble." Somebody else will be saying, hey, "Brother, you know what is the good news? I'm surrounded with all the lions, man, and I feel like I'm Daniel in the den. And oh. praise God, I'm coming with my testimony." Amen. <laughs> so one has got a mind of a victim, another one has got a mind of a conqueror, a victor. So whatever mind you got, that's exactly what you become. Amen. So now somebody is saying, I, "I'm in the uh, Daniel's lion's den, man," and you know what? I don't have to go out and search for love because God has poured His love in me, and I've never been using this potential, man. And now I'm learning how to open the tap called love. And the more they are insulting, brother, there was a time I used to go and cry, and now I'm going and laughing at the devil and saying, "Come on, I got it! I'm going to pass this test." Hmm. How do you think I got my promotion for so many years, Jos? Yeah, yeah, brother. How do you think I got all this promotion in my life for so many years? Do you practice? If, if, you, if you tell me, how did I really learn the Bible? I learned the Bible with more and more uh, warfare, battles. Okay. Either you learn to fight or you give up and die. Mm -hmm. But when you learn to fight and your response is agape love, you become such a better person that you have never ever imagined. In fact, this uh, this love thing is a it's a quite a you know uh, confusing thing a lot of people because a lot of people have messaged me to clarify that the love is uh, you know is based on feeling or is it a decision. Good that we took this uh, topic and uh, you know clarified. Matthew, uh, you, Matthew. Know, you, you know you know what is love? I think we have got more than fifty episodes. Okay, okay. Go on the YouTube and learn on the love topic. I'll tell you, you will get victory in your life just like that. Mm. My, my, I, I'll give an example. Mm. I was a person who first started learning on faith. And on faith, I could move mountains and all of that. And, and everything was going fine. But now I became so strong in faith that I became a Hitler at home. So now it was law. And in those days, I did not understand. It was law. This is what the word said. This is how it should be. Did, 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 did. And my wife said, you know what? You're more dangerous now than before. <laughs> and, and, I don't, and I could not understand why she's saying she, I'm more dangerous. And in those days, my anger was very high. And I told her, this is my house. I'm the head of the family. Now, listen, I'm using all scriptures, OK? Yeah. I'm the head of the family. And if things don't happen the way I want, you can get out. Yeah. Now, she's the same woman, my wife, who fought with Satan, brought me out of the pits of hell, yeah. took care of me. And now when I began to learn on scriptures and healings and all these things happened, so she did not say anything. I'll tell you, the women are very smart people. Yeah. They are very smart. She did not open her mouth. And I thought, it's fixed, man. I showed her some muscles and she's become like a chicken. Praise God. Five months went by. The day the exams got over, on that very day morning, I saw the mother, the sister, and uncle come to my house. And I was so surprised that nobody told me. So I said, wow, I welcome them and everything. And when I went in the bedroom, the bags are getting packed. So I said, where are all everybody going? She recalls what I told her. Can you believe? Mm. 
And she says, you told me to go. I'm going. And I told her, listen, I was a man in the club. I was a man on the street. I was a man that no woman would ever want. And you stuck with me. Now I'm preaching the word. I've changed. I've not gone there. Now what's the problem? She turned around and said, you are more dangerous now than before. I said, what is dangerous? She said, when you were doing wrong, you at least you knew you were doing wrong. Now you're wrong, but you don't know you're wrong. You're, you feel you're right. And I'm not going to give you a divorce or a separation. I'm going out because if I don't go, this will continue and you will destroy so many lives. I will have to go. And I started praying and crying, asking God to intervene. And I fainted. I actually fainted. But that did not stop her. She left. The moment she left, I said, wow. Now I can go and get her back with my faith. I've got faith that can move mountains. So she went to Bangalore. I don't have the address. And I took a, 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 a train and I went straight to Pota. Now I've got a room there. Hello? Yeah, yeah. I'm just... I've got a room there. Yeah. I can stay in the room for a month, no problem. I've got a room. So I spent four weeks fasting, praying, moving mountains, faith, and I come back. And I'm so sure, confident that she's coming back. And praise God. Do you know what happened? She never came back. <laughs> you're laughing. I don't want to tell the story anymore. No, 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 no. I'm. Uh, no, you laugh, brother. You, you, you got no compassion. You're laughing on my story. Yeah, no, I'm hearing. I'm. Uh, it's a painful story, and I said she never came back. You're laughing. Then I, can't I don't want to it because if I continue, you'll keep on laughing. It's not. A, it's not a lie. It's a real story. No, I am seeing the victory. I can see the victory that coming in. I'm laughing at that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now came the question, God, I used all the scriptures, I used faith, I used this, I used that. Why is she not coming? And the Lord gave me that Galatians 5, 6. And he said, faith works through love. He said, do you love her? I said, Lord, I love her. If I had not loved her, would I leave my business and everything and go there for one month, Lord? And he said, no, you don't love her. And then began the story. Just read this, brother. If I if I speak in the tongues of mortal and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I am I gain nothing. So I said, Lord, what is love? So he said, the love that I'm talking and you are talking are different. So now began the topic of love. And now I discovered after she left, faith did not work and faith works through love. So now I'm digging into what is this love? Because if my faith has to work, it can work only through love. So I found love has got four different words. Mm. One is starch, S-T-A-R-G-E, mm. where it's love between the parents and the children, uh, family love. Mm. The second one is eros, which is a love between husband and wife, and it is even physical. Mm. No third person is allowed in that love only between a husband and wife. The third love is philo love, P-H-I-L-E-O. It's a love between the friends. And the fourth love is agape love, which is God's love. And this is what God has poured into my heart. So I said, what's the difference? The first three are based on performance. Mm. If I perform good, I will get the response good. If I don't perform good, the response is 
So it's a two-way love. And the love that God began to teach me was the agape love. And that love is one-sided. God loves me the way I am. He doesn't love me because I do good, because I'm good. He loved me even when I was a sinner and he took my place on the cross. So he said, I want you to learn this love. And then he said, look at this. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me read it because this is, this is where I got stuck. Yeah. Love is patient. I said, yes, that's me. Love is kind. That's me. Love is not envious. That's me. Love is not arrogant. That's me or rude. Love does not what? Insist on its own way. And the Lord said, what about this? And I said, God, but I'm the head, no? I'm the head of the family, no? So he gave me an answer. He said, listen, husband, you are the head over your wife as Christ is over the church. The church is the bride and Christ is the bridegroom. Mm. And Christ, the husband, willingly died for his wife. That's when he began to teach me what is love. And he said, if you love, are you willing to die for your wife? Are you willing to give up everything? And I said, Lord, I never know this. Can you teach me? And I began to practice and I said, God, she doesn't even know anything because there was no phone call, no phone number, nothing. And I said, God, how will she know that I've changed? I've been changing, I've been doing everything. When will she come back? And he asked me a question. Are you doing all this so that she can come back? Are you going to do it for me? And I said, God, I'm sorry. Whether she comes back or not, I'll do it for you. I'll never ever ask you again when is she coming back? Never. But I'll do it for you. But can you teach me? Can you give me an example? And one day he showed me a dog on the street was sleeping there and I was in my car and I was driving and I brought the car very close to him honked the dog was looking at me but never moved and I said what a confidence this dog has got and I stopped and I and I just passed by and the Lord said stop the car get down from the car I want you to go and have a good look on the dog. So I got down, went to the dog and saw the dog was dead. He asked me, if you kick this dog, will he bark? Will he bite? Will he chase you? I said, no. The day you become like this, you'll be able to operate in love. No matter who kicks you, no matter who insults you, no matter how people treat you, you are not going to bark or bite them. Then it was a rainy day. I went to somebody's house and there was a mat outside. And it said, welcome. Hi. And 
and before entering the house. I cleaned my shoe on that mat. Can you believe? That mat took all the dirt but did not harm me. And the Lord said, this is agape love. That's when I began to learn. And at that time I was giving the retreats. Nobody knew what had happened in my marriage. And I got a chance to go to Mysore to preach. By now, she called me and she said that she has decided to move from her mother's house to take her own house on rent. And when, the, when she said that, it's a clear proof something has happened. Why would she want to go from her mother's house to a separate house? And I know why she called me. Do you know why she called me? Jos? No, no, she wanted to come back. Ah. Jesse, why did she call me? Look at the answer from she, a woman. She called you because she wanted to meet you and be with you. Listen, listen. She's shifting to a new place. And you come. Oh, why she dream? Jesse, why did she call me? She wanted you then, Brother Johnson. How can she move to a new place without money? <laughs> Just, so she wanted money, is it? But more than that, she wanted you. Are, but for me, uh, wanted me will come. Listen, wanted me will come later on. She doesn't have the money. <laughs> I have the money. I have my business, yes. I have my house, I've got everything in Bombay. And when she called me, I came to know why she called me. Okay. And I'm about to say, come to Bombay. And this verse became like a bulldozer coming on my mind and saying, don't open your mouth. You will blow it up. Just say to her, I'm sending you the money. Go and find the place. So the money was sent. My time is up, brother. Okay, we can finish this story, brother. This is... Uh, we need we'll to... continue tomorrow, brother. No, we will uh, finish the story and then close. Is it okay? <laughs> yeah, it is okay. I thought the story was boring. No, no, story is... Uh... Please yeah, you always like to hear other people's story. If I ask you, tell your story, you won't tell. I don't have too many stories, brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So... So now I give the money, they move to the place, the furniture, everything. So now what comes to my mind, the old Johnson comes back. Now I can go home because it's my money. It's my hard earned money that I've given. So I can go home and stay there. And the Lord says, no, you will destroy it. And I said, Lord, why? And he gave me an answer and he said, a farmer does not plant the seed in summer. He waits for the rainy day. Yeah. And a good seed planted in a good soil, in a good season, will bring the harvest. This is not your season. This is, this is a summer season. Don't you even ask her that I'm coming. Don't do that. Don't do that. And I said, God, I, I, do, do you remember you told me that you're not going to ask? I said, yes, Lord, I told you. Three months went by. And I had gone to Mysore for a retreat. And you know, Mysore, I'm in Bombay, okay? So for to go back to Bombay, you got to pass through Bangalore, you see? Yeah. So that night was my bus to Bombay. And um, I came from Mysore and I gave her a call and I said, I am in Bangalore. I had gone for a retreat. Can we meet up? somewhere and she turns around and says why don't you come home yeah. I said, god she's calling me home she said yeah this is the season go home so i go home when i go home it's like 
a stranger walking into the stranger's house the old bad memories hurt memories uh, you know you know she was working for the bank standard chartered bank and when i got married in 3 months i told her to leave the job because i was i was earning a lot a lot i said your salary i'm earning within few hours okay so forget the job and now she has to find a job and she she was going through a tough time even though i was sending her the money but it was tough and now the old memories and we are all sitting there four of us and hardly talking after some time she said come on let's have dinner and she served dinner and she made my favorite and i was licking she saw me eating tears rolling down and i'm eating and when i finished eating i picked up my bag and i said i'm going and she said can you stay tonight i said lord she told me to stay I said good season you are not posing love does not insist his own way she is she is requesting you take it and i said i'll stay can you believe jos from that day till today i'm staying there <laughs> praise god <laughs> that is what i knew that the victory is there so praise god <laughs> but 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 this is the scripture okay that changed my life love does not yes. insist its own way amen and that's a happy love amen. that's an amazing love okay. and and i want to tell you this incident that happened it happened for my good mm. otherwise i would never know what is agape love and i would have destroyed so many lives so many lives amen so after that came that agape love became my foundation faith was my foundation in the beginning now agape love became the root and uh, things began to go at a high speed <laughs> that that's my story it's amazing yeah. so, so when i was a bad man she did not leave me when i changed mm. and then i went on the other side you know mm. you, you know when you misinterpret the scripture it can become extremely dangerous mm. and that's what happened with me but praise god god took me on a journey and i was in a desert experience wilderness experience all experience now when my people come and say i got a problem in my marriage i said listen <laughs> you a press won't change your marriage let me I tell you there is something that you have to break and something you have to construct then things will change amen i had to break down all my bad things and reconstruct new things in its place it became beautiful amen brother so, so that crisis was meant to kill us but god yeah. turned it for good yeah. so that's my story thank you brother it is an amazing it is an amazing learning what an what a what an experience brother it is a more than the experience uh, your experience has put in the same impact upon all the listeners today and i pray that this uh, agape love uh, may be discovered by each one of us that is very important that you know many times we fail we co- constantly fail on that till we reach there i think our uh, our uh, you know we will never be able to walk in the path which lord has lord wanted us to walk that perfection which he is talking in the word praise god praise god that, that, that's exactly and uh, the, when he, when he began to share with me about he being the head and we are his bride mm. and when he said are you willing to die mm. physically and that you know every time i go to that scripture still today mm. that scripture changed my life mm. i died for you physically to save you come on that's a god we love amen so let us close it is a, such a it was such a wonderful evening and we and you you see brother all, uh, that's why I, i like people participating and asking questions because then we learn what the holy spirit wants to give us yes okay thank you so don't think that you are changing the topic no 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 the topic is always going to be 
what the holy spirit wants yeah amen i have a question brother jude from chennai yeah and, 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 and no 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 answer but let's take the question if it is a one line question answer i'll give him well how does he have sleepless night brother please yeah <laughs> sorry sorry i have to apologize to no, brother you just send me the question at the beginning <laughs> let this uh, permitted okay so no, but uh, all along you have been talking to god that's something i am not able to do you know i talk to god through the scriptures brother okay brother thank you please please understand i said no the scriptures is god talking to me and i responding to him by agreeing to the to what he's saying in his written word so so sometimes what happens okay. people talk to god but they don't know the scripture and the devil will say that's god talking to you but when you know the scripture you know that god can never speak anything against his own scripture that's why it's so so important that you got to know the scriptures and when you are when you are desire as i told you the desire the desire will get you inside oh. okay okay thank you god very much you. god bless you thank love you. you thank you thank, thank you everybody let us pray thank you father for this beautiful evening lord the words that we heard today let it move our hearts so much of truth that we heard today lord let it go deeper 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 by your power of the holy spirit and let it start producing results in our lives fruits in our lives in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. brother thank you brothers and sisters we will meet tomorrow god bless bye 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 thank you brother thank you